Okay, perfect. If I can ask everybody to take their seats and settle, we'll uh, immediately get going uh, with Himanshu from Semantic, telling us about the router of all uh, evils. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here, and thanks, Vibi, for giving, giving me another chance to be here. Last year I was here, I was talking about fileless malware, and this year I'll be talking about router malware. So, yeah, so our topic is like sophisticated router malware, more than just default passwords in silly script. So as of yet, we have seen a lot of uh, uh, malwares, router-related malwares, where they were using the scripts, and from Mirai onwards, we have started seeing the binaries. But this, in this talk, uh, I'm going to discuss about, uh, uh, we have seen an attack where the attacker was actually flashing the firmware of the router itself, and that was new for us, and we feel like we should share with the community. And Chastin is not here, she's having a baby, so congrats to her, and it's just me here alone. Okay, and special thanks to these guys, so Malve Masjai, they have done a lot of uh, good research uh, in the Linux space and router space, so thanks a lot to them, thanks to Karthik and my whole team at Cementec. So a uh, little about me, I'm Himanshu, I'm working with the IPS Semantic team, and I got a few hobbies. These are just like time pass. So first thing, let's, uh, this, uh, this talk is divided into basically three parts. First part, I'm going to explain a bit about uh, router because might be few people not really know strategically uh, importance of router in the network. And after that, I'll be discussing about uh, the malware we have seen so far and the uh, attacks which, uh, uh, important attacks which are related with the router and we have seen so far. And last uh, topic would be the core stuff of this talk, uh, which is uh, uh, the firmware, uh, what we have seen. So introduction to the router, nothing really cool. So just internet, modern router, and it's just used to route the traffic between um, the machines. So I guess most of you know, so we should just move ahead. So basically, packet in, packet out, and it just got few algorithms, packet switching algorithms and routing engines. So it decides which path to follow and how to send the traffic from the internet to the end machine. So importance of router, uh, basically, uh, router is strategically located in a place where, from where uh, if, if we can get access to the router. Uh, attacker can see all the traffic coming in and going out uh, in the network. So that's why a router is like very much strategically significant. You can see all the traffic and you can control uh, all the traffic or almost all the traffic. So uh, it can help uh, the restriction of uh, host communication. So if, uh, let's say, uh, if an attacker wants you to not communicate with something, so those things can be done and it can manipulate a lot of things or almost every traffic. So uh, how many of you guys remember this? Okay. What about this? Cool. What about this? Perfect. So there is one thing common in all last three slides. Anyone can think about it? Okay, so it's the router. So, so all three means this talk is about routers. So obviously, it's about the router. So, so why attack routers? So, as I said, that strategically location of the router is such that uh, you can see all the traffic. So that's why router. And as of yet, what we have seen, people used to attack router, uh, routers because it's all about DDoS. As of yet, uh, even if about Mirai or some of the other known malware, it's mostly about uh, the uh, DDoS attacks. They control, they take control of the traffic and they just use it to DDoS any particular website or service or whatever. So that's what they used to do. And these were the basic thing, but now we are seeing a change in threat landscape and we are seeing they are doing harvester uh, credentials they are sniffing traffic and they are injecting advertisement and very recently we have came across there were a few IoT malwares which were doing spam also. 
द रेट वॉज नॉट वेरी मच आई गेस टेन स्पैम पर आर और टेन स्पैम टेन मेल स्पैम मेल पर डे बट या दैट शुड बी देयर बट या दिस इज ओल्ड लाइक अ बिट ओल्ड सो अटैकिंग राउटर सो बेसिकली हाउ अटैकर्स डू अटैक राउटर्स दे आर थ्री बेसिक थिंग्स डिफॉल्ट पासवर्ड डी एन एस चेंजिंग एंड एक्सपर्ट फ्रेम वर्क सो इन विद एक्सपर्ट फ्रेम वर्क वॉट आई मीन इज द फ्रेम वर्क लाइक मैटासपॉइट दे गॉट द Known exploits embedded in them, so uh, anyone can attack routers. So let's go ahead from here. So default password, password-based attack. So this is the Anna Senpai guy who was like uh, selling the Mirai botnet for the DDoS attack, and the whole uh, botnet was based upon the default password-based attack. So all the routers which are exposed to the internet and passwords are not being changed, and the passwords are still the default. So uh, the guy was attacking those. uh routers and actually the iot devices basically so routers were also the part of it and the guy was infecting them with this bot and then attacking the networks so these are few of the default passwords which are like uh, which were present in the bot uh, at that time and i guess he might have updated it or something but yeah root admin admin root and these kind of passwords are like even in my home routers these were the default passwords and I don't know. Even before writing this, uh, doing this research, even my passwords were default, I guess. So yeah, we should change these passwords. So DNS changer is this visible? I must say this this is a very bad image. But DNS changing, how this really works is like uh, someone do visit the website and website is injected with the iframes, which make request to the your home routers, and it's. those request in a manner that it uh, attack the your home router with the default passwords and it change the dns server uh, in the config configuration in your router page so that's how the this dns changer really works and what they really do is once they have uh, attacked the router and they have changed the dns uh, what they can do is they can inject add in the web pages so that uh, the all the machines in that network who say are like visiting anything they would inject uh, the ad network and this is kind of a uh, common attack i have seen a lot and if your dns password the router passwords are like default or loose passwords then uh, means most of us have might have seen it so so famous router attack so the images previously i have shown uh, so those were all three were like major famous router attacks so first thing is by hacking team so the phineas fisher have published this uh, on uh, i guess paste bin and he this part where i have highlighted he said that a zero day in embedded embedded device seems like easiest option so yeah that means uh, even attacker knows uh that router and embedded devices security is not that great so uh finis fisher have try means when he thought about taking the hacking team down he targeted the zero day in the router device so that he can penetrate or the first point from where he can penetrate in their network so yeah so this is like very famous attack what we have came across after that we have came across equation group dump so uh, shadow group brokers have dumped the equation group and they have listed like these many uh, exploits which were related with few of them were related with cisco or i guess all of them were related with cisco i don't know but yeah so even this things clear up, uh, uh, says a story that uh, people are really aware about router exploits and they are using and in a dump if we are saying like Uh, shadow broker kind of dump we are seeing such kind of zero days so that means people are really targeting routers and uh, they are aware about uh, the importance of router and how they can really use router to uh, target people yeah so types of malware so basically three types of malware basically first two and firmware was like different case but yeah script based malware so majorly we have seen script based malware uh, where python script or perl script people are using and then they are uh, most of the time they were connecting to some irc channel and which were used uh, which were used for doing the ddos so basically uh, majorly same kind of thing ddos 
based attacks were seen with script based malware. After that, we came across the compiled binaries, ELF kind of malwares. So ELF kind of malware is a simple thing, the Mirai example. And then we came across firmware. So when we talk about firmware, I'm, there could be two cases. One case, what I'm going to discuss is like, uh, attacker is flashing the router uh, firmware remotely. And another case is like, vendor themselves are providing infected uh, firmware and they are shipping the router with the firmware, infected firmware itself. So I'm not discussing that part. So script-based malware, basically we have seen Shellshock uh, series of exploits were used and they were like exploited and they had Perl IRC bots embedded in them. So in the URL itself, sometimes it came with ELF also and it was like say, uh, as the means we know that router-based security is not that good and the vendor themselves, they are not really uh, good with patching this stuff and still in the field we can find like uh, if you are, if you go to market and buy a new router we might find it still vulnerable with 2014's these cvs cell shock cvs or any of the other very old linux cvs so as linux is freely available and uh, they can modify it but still they are not really eager to patch this stuff so yeah still these things are like very much can be found in the field. And common traits in these kind of uh, malwares are like they drop a shell script. So this is the shell script where they, uh, in here they were downloading the binaries and uh, they were replacing our the binaries with the normal system binaries. So different IPs address and simply it was just wget and then downloading the binaries and replacing it. All the binaries were like uh, uh, the the normal binaries which are like, they were replacing the system binaries with the same name and same thing and that's all. So compiled binaries kind of attack we have seen with Mirai and which was a worm based attack. So basically uh, when one device is infected with Mirai, it was attacking other devices and checking for devices on the network and on the internet so that it can find out where the default passwords are and if any other default password got hit, then they would reinfect them. So basically worm kind of behavior. So it was self-propagating. So firmware. So this is the real, real thing of my talk. So firmware based attack, Netgear uh, router attack. So in which we found that uh, Netgear at uh, CV, uh, remote code execution CV, the CV was found. And uh, what attacker was really doing, he was using the CV for the remote code execution and attacker was flashing the firmware with open source firmware and he was using firmware mod kit, that's FMK, it's, it's, an, it's an again open source tool and attacker have modified that uh, uh, firmware to uh, put in his scripts and the attacker was uh, flashing the firmware with it. So this is the uh, string exploit. So in here IP address, we can simply replace the IP address with the IP address of the router. And the, uh, the vulnerability was in CGI bin part. And in here we can see the attacker is downloading. So it's like HTTP IP address, then H slash WRT UGE dot SH. So that's the shell script, uh, uh, what uh, attacker is downloading and putting in it uh, temp slash something and then executing is. So very simple plain exploit where it was getting the RC. So what's inside the shell script? So inside the shell script we can see it, the attacker is downloading uh, 112.bin which was the firmware from this IP and that's all it was doing right and then reboot. So this, this simple shell script what it was using for flashing the firmware itself. So going inside the binary, what it have dropped, uh, what we can see is like, uh, uh, this is binwalk simple. So binwalk, we can see it's say TRX firmware header and uh, it is kind gzip compressed data. So yeah, this is a uh, firmware. This we can verify from here. And once we have done the bin walk, we, what we did is like we have extracted the binary, we did bin walk minus C simple. And after that we have walked in through the directory structure. And when we did the doc into the directory structure, we found out that inside init.d, it had uh, two oh, very interesting files in there. So RCS and this dummy file. 
So inside this script, when we get inside those scripts, what we find out uh, that it was creating a file with the date and uh, it was uploading that file to a FTP server. So this thing was interesting and uh, this was the whole command and we can see that user ID and password, so I haven't really changed it, so it's very much the same what we have seen in the attack. So the user ID and password uh, and the path where the attacker was really uploading all these things and the format it was uploading was like countries, first four letter, then date and then IP address and then text and it was uploading to its FTP server. Again, so what the attacker was uploading. Uh, as of yet, we have never seen such kind of attack uh, where the attacker is really trying to flash the firmware and it is trying to upload this stuff because uh, before then we have most of the time what we have seen was like it was doing the DDoS attack. Mostly it's all about DDoS attack or injecting the ad but this thing, this was thing was new for me and this thing is like uh, when we tried to go inside this, so we find out it was doing DNS sniff and then this command and all the username and passwords, whatever it came across, it was dumping all those things in this file, dsfile.txt. And this was the very first time where uh, we found out that with the firmware itself, the attacker was trying to sniff the credentials and the attacker was harvesting the credentials of the network. And when we really logged in into that uh, router, so these many files we did found. So it's just a snippet, but yeah, they were like, it's just A and B. So they were like C, D, E, and till Z. So yeah, so these many files we found. So obviously these many routers were infected by the attacker. So before going to the demo, uh, there was very interesting thing in it. Uh, the interesting thing was there are a few files which are like bigger files and when we go inside those files, what we found out that the routers which were infected by this firmware were also infected by Mirai. And uh, as the attacker was sniffing all the uh, credentials and it was trying to harvest all the credentials, so we, what we found out that uh, uh, we had all the passwords which were tried by the Mirai botnet over these routers. The same thing we can see in these text files also. So demo time. So here I got 112.bin, so I'm simply doing the bin walk. And we can see the firmware header. So this is SquashFS file system. So I'm just extracting everything. So here we got underscore 112bin.extracted. So going inside SquashFS file system, and we can see this is Linux directory structure. <laughs> So now I'm just going to list all these in a tree format. So tree.txt, export it, going in there, opening this up, busy box and all this stuff. So in ED, we had this, these two files. So in ED is for whenever the system would reboot, it would re-initialize all these things. Now going inside the scripts, so yeah, this is what it's doing. Sleep, with the, uh, sleep some time and then it is doing wget and doing downloading the sh script. So, and lo and we can see the uh, its servers from where it is trying to download other files. Hi, Chesshin. Okay. 
So I, I wanted to do a live demo, but unfortunately I haven't really bring up my laptop. That's like huge. So yeah. So best practices are like keep your firm, firmware up to date. But uh, someone did ask me, do you update your firmware router? And I said no. I never have done it. But yeah, it's a better practice to do it uh, because because firmware are like are like not not that secure. We know this thing. And even uh, the big thing is our uh, a, the firmware developers know uh, that they are not really going to update it because I found few vulnerabilities with uh, my home router, and when I did try to disclose it to uh, the to the vendor, they simply didn't listen to it. So yeah, that kind of things do happen because they don't really care about security. What they care about only the hardware and just to ship it. And once they have shipped it, uh, they don't really care about what vulnerability, what zero day, what RCE, or what kind of privileges someone else is having. So yeah, so that's an issue. And most of these kind of issues do happen with the home routers. So another thing is do not use default passwords. So default password is like a very huge issue uh, because uh, we have seen uh, attacks like Mirai, and uh, we cannot really ignore a default password thing, and that's that's really a big issue. And use strong passwords. So how come this is different from default password? Is like default password is like admin admin or admin password. So a strong password would be like at least uh, someone might not able to find it in their dictionary attack. Who knows? Uh, in future, they might start using complete dictionary for brute forcing the passwords. So yeah. And QA. So, yeah, questions time. So, I think that's it.